بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیو ویورز السلام علیکم آئی ایم یو ہوسٹ فیصل رضا خان اینڈ یو آر واچنگ فور سائٹ ویورز ایز یو آل نو دیٹ کشمیر از آن بوتھ سائڈ آف لائن آف کنٹرول الانگ ود اکراس دا ورلڈ ابزرونگ بلیک ڈے ٹو ڈے وائل پاکستانیز اینڈ ناٹ اونلی ان پاکستان بٹ اکراس دا ورلڈ دے آر ناٹ اونلی سپورٹنگ بٹ آلسو بی ود brothers and sisters uh, in the in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Kashmiris have been facing the worst kind of uh, Indian sponsored state uh, sponsored terrorism since uh, October 27, 1947. Unfortunately, the United Nations Security Council resolutions uh, are still pending and uh, uh, this Kashmir issue is still to resolve at the international arena. On 5th of uh, August 2019, when India revoked Article 370 and 35A and inflicted another kind of uh, terrorism upon the Kashmiris, and that was and that is the demographic changes, alteration in the geography, and uh, Kashmiris' identity is still questioned. There was a sheer attack by the Indian supremacist, extremist, and uh, followers of Hindutva regime on Kashmiris. This issue is a grave one and that's why whole of the world community is still mum at this issue because of their uh, sheer interest with India. Unfortunately, an issue from the last 75 years is on the international agenda at the UN agenda, but unfortunately no one paid much heed upon it. Pakistan is supporting morally, politically and diplomatically to its uh, Kashmiri brothers and sisters. Kashmiris are still fighting for their inalienable right of self-determination and this Kashmir issue is highlighted across the world and it was the diplomatic and political effort by Pakistan. Now discussing this issue we have in our studios Mr. Naveed Aman, he is the senior journalist sure. and analyst. Thank you very much sir for being with us. Along with that, uh, uh, Dr. Ziaul Haq Shamsi Saab, uh, he is an international relation expert. Thank you very much, sir, for being with us in studios. And online, uh, Brigadier Hamid Rashid, uh, he is the foreign affairs expert as well. And thank you very much for joining us uh, online. Uh, starting from you, Navi Saab, uh, how do you see particularly the Indian uh, state-sponsored terrorism inflicting a lot of pain to the Kashmiris and unfortunately these human rights violations are not very well taken by the international community. Yes, uh, Faisal, uh, since uh, October 27, 1947, uh, in, uh, India has uh, occupied uh, that part of Kashmir uh, and since then uh, they have, uh, uh, they are continuing their occupation on Kashmir uh, against the will and the wishes of the Kashmiris. Uh, the, uh, the Kashmiris, they have been struggling for their right of uh, self-determination since long and uh, they have been deprived of by the Indian authorities, Indi Indian different political parties, uh, whosoever came to rule India, uh, all of them they have been depriving the Kashmiris from their uh, right of self-determination. And uh, since then, in 1947, 1948, uh, in, in Qaid's life, Qaid-e-Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah, he said that Kashmir is the jugular vein of Pakistan. And uh, we believe that uh, Kashmir is the jugular vein of Pakistan and is a lifeline of Pakistan. So Pakistan uh, is a party to Kashmir. Uh, it's not uh, the part of um, India, uh, Pakistan and uh, India, if, if India claims that, uh, that Kashmir is a part of India, we claim that the, the Kashmir is a part of Pakistan and the Kashmiris, they, they want, they have their will to be the part of Pakistan or they want to get rid of uh, Indian uh, authorities or India. Uh, uh, what uh, India has done so far uh, in Kashmir is only atrocities. So, uh, uh, Dr. Shamsi Saab, when we are talking about particularly the Kashmir issue, uh, uh, there are uh, 18 resolutions passed by the UN Security Council and abundant resolutions by the UN General Assembly as well. So, why international community is not paying much heed to it and why they are not uh, making India accountable on uh, the human rights violations and atrocities, whatever is going on in the illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir? 
थैंक यू फर्स्ट बिस्म रमान रहीम एक्चुअली वेन एवर ट्वेंटी सेवन फेब अक्टूबर कम्स इट्स नॉट ओनली अ ब्लैक डे इन आर लाइफ बट इट्स द बिगनिंग ऑफ अ वेरी पेनफुल हिस्ट्री we have to go back before i respond to your question we have to go back into each and every date and event that was taking place from 26th october onwards when the accession so called accession was signed by maharaja hari singh it was signed under duress number 1 number 2 there were certain conditions to which sheikh abdullah was party 27th the indian troops land and he start to occupy and he start to push the uh, resistance back 27th on the same day qaid asks army chief general gracie to send troops and he refuses he says it is the decision of the supreme commander who was watching like that between the <coughs> inter dominion wars the british officers will stand down so he refused and on the same evening qaid formed the war council under prime minister liaquat ali khan and it was immediately decided that we will send another 5000 tribesmen to maintain control and assist the resistant fighters or the kashmiris our brothers it was formed basically because of the general gracie's denial absolutely absolutely in my opinion general gracie should have either resigned or should have been sacked on the same evening but ochin like flew into lahore and to meet the uh, qaid and then subsequently uh, the matter was taken by indians to united nations and as you said that some 18 resolutions are pending for the last 75 years so it's a long and a very very painful so dr shamsi sir how do you see particularly that uh, uh, british question because uh, how much Brit- uh, britain is responsible uh, for this issue 500% it was there if i may use the word um badniyati or uh, dishonesty dishonesty sheer dishonesty sheer dishonesty and uh, um, an act which was deliberately done to favor india as they have done in uh, the in palestine in, in palestine. palestine actually that was my uh, next so uh, so we move on with our topic because uh, we have uh, uh, brigadier hamid rashid online uh, brigadier sir uh, uh, as dr shamsi said that uh, uh, britain was uh, Uh, 500 percent responsible for this issue to uh, uh, along it, and uh, unfortunately, this is uh, pending from the last 76 years. So, uh, w- how do you see, particularly, because when we are going through these international relations and the politics going on, uh, Britain was aligned with the uh, at that time uh, Indian Congress. Along with that, uh, we have seen in Palestine, so they were aligned more with the Jews as well, and uh, for the creation of uh, Israel, they have uh, relations with both. And uh, then, unfortunately, or whatever, that India and Israel has a nexus, and that nexus is now very much visible within Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. How do you respond to this one? Thank you very much, Faisal. And uh, I think very important aspect of the Indo-Israel nexus, as well as the Indian atrocities pattern in that space. What we see that uh, I would like to uh, agree with Dr. Shamsi that it was the dishonesty of the Britain. And what Britain were. Uh, I think so. There are some technical issues. Uh, soon it would be resolved. So. we will be back to uh, brigadier hamid uh, dr uh, shamsi sir uh, uh, if you respond to the same question that how do you see the israel india nexus because we have seen over the years that uh, uh, some of the mining agreements with uh, israel and they are working very closely uh, to the line of control um, also indian raw and uh, 
uh, Israeli Mossad has a lot of connection with each other. Even Mossad has given a lot of training and equipment and technical uh, overview uh, to the Indians as well. So how do you see that? Because uh, this issue is now uh, going at the same pattern as Palestine. Yeah, this is a very, very important aspect that needs to be discussed here at this forum. Um, and through your forum, I would like to name these two states, the two eyes that India and Israel as I have, I call them uh, inherently criminal states, ICS. They are inherently criminal states and they are both the product of the British. So it was the British dishonesty, if you go through the uh, initiation of uh, the, uh, the Palestinian issue uh, right from the Balfour, uh, the uh, their uh, conspiracies against go back the to Ottoman, the history in, in 1917 Ottoman, Ottoman, against the Ottoman, and then again here in 1947 to 48, that Mountbatten was the Governor General of India when the accession was signed, and the troops were sent by India into Kashmir with with his consent, and he had the audacity to visit Lahore and speak to Qaid that we will try and resolve this this this. No, it was sheer dishonesty and they supported uh, these two eyes. They are inherently criminal states, states and they follow the same pattern of atrocities in their respective domain. You just look at what is happening in Kashmir and you just look at what is happening in Gaza. It is exactly the same. Israel actually trains and has brainwashed Indian leadership to follow this idea of surgical strikes. They choose the time and place of their own choice and they go and bomb poor and innocent civilians who are non-combatants. And more than 50% of the deaths are to the children and minors. They are unarmed, you know. Absolutely, non-combatants, that is why I am <laughs> saying. And they, what do they achieve? Three Ds, deaths, destruction, devastation, only so that the people remain in under fear of their lives. Where they are lucky, I call them lucky, the two eyes. Why? The whole western world is behind them in their doings. So, uh, when uh, uh, Naveed said, uh, when we are talking about uh, this very important grave issue, uh, now, uh, the problem is that it is at the agenda of the UN Se uh, Security Council. Uh, 18 of the resolutions are there. Uh, P5 not paying much heed to this issue particularly. Whenever it comes uh, Pakistan-India question, the Kashmir question, uh, there are uh, closed door discussions but unfortunately nothing coming out. America and rest of the countries are at the backing of the United Nations because they are the huge funders, 20% of the financial assistance given to the United Nations. But United Nations seems that they are weaker when there is the question of Kashmir. So how do you see this aspect and what about the Muslim Ummah? Uh, not only about Kashmir, uh, if we talk about Palestine as well, on both of the issues, United Nations and the entire world seems to be very weak as far as the American influence and the British influence is concerned. Uh, uh, you are talking about the role of Ummah. Yes, the role of Ummah is very important unless the, the uh, entire Ummah stand up uh, with uh, uh, Palestine and with Kashmiris. As the West, Britain, uh, France, Germany or America stand with uh, Israel, unless this uh, stand with these two... Uh, 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 but do you think that uh, uh, only the conferences, communiques, statements it, no, 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 it are going enough. to be are enough for the... Uh, amicable resolution of the Kashmir issue or uh, some sort of uh, uh, real-time action or the accountability of India must have to be intact? Definitely it is insufficient but we will have to enhance diplomatic and political pressure on uh, America, on UN and on OIC, uh, Arab League and all the forums. Do you think over the years, 76 years, it has never, it, it has anything has been no, done on that? No, no, it has never happened but the, the, the way is this. Uh, number two is uh, uh, the strength of economy. Uh, number three is uh, uh, the clarity of might. Uh, they will have to have courage uh, 
for uh, Israel for uh, Palestine, uh, standing for Palestine, and in uh, uh, in Kashmir, 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 Kashmir at the same Kashmir. time. Doctor Shamsi Sir, uh, uh, now when we are talking about the resolution of the Kashmir issue, now the thing is that on, on 5th of August 2019, India has inflicted a lot of pain to the Kashmiris, to Pakistan as well, because. On that day, they revoked Article 370 and 35A from their constitution. Now, the situation is that soon after, non-Kashmiri settlers are now entering into, as the Israeli settlers were there and at the Same. Palestinian soil. Now, the de demography is continuously on change. Then there is uh, alteration into the geography. And the threat and uh, the attack on the Kashmiri identity as well. So what the resolutions say plebiscite right of self-determination in the um, under the umbrella of united nation but if there would be a demographic change in the population change do you think that when the non-kashmiris entered into kashmir there would be their majority or something like that do you think that uh, it's going to work when we are talking about the resolutions no i don't think so um, as a muslim uh, though we are not supposed to lose hope but there is no resolution in sight and there is no effort in that direction on part of the UN or OIC or the entire Muslim Ummah. There is no one voice. As I said uh, in my previous uh, talk that the two eyes are absolutely lucky that they have full support of the entire western world and UN is helpless. At the same time, the, uh, in the uh, Kashmiri case, entire world supports India is darling out the West and OIC, Muslim Ummah, they do not have a common voice for the people of Kashmir. There are resolutions, n number of resolutions at the OIC forum also and at the UN also, but there is non-implementation of either either uh, revolution, not even condemnation now. Now there are many countries who not, who do not even condemn Israeli actions and the Indian actions and as far as Nexus is concerned, it has just been confirmed three days back, Qatar has announced the death sentence to eight Indian naval officers, retired officers who were serving including in the Qatar armed forces. Including a sailor. Isn't it? <laughs> that they are awarded death sentence because they were working for Israel, mm -hmm. espionage for Israel. We have the same case, Kulbushan, retired Indian officer, working for India, inside Pakistan, carrying out uh, terrorism acts, supporting terrorism, and we are still holding him, he is not still being had. That state-sponsored regional terrorism now converting mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. the global one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, we, we have a case in Canada. The Br for in India? Britain as well, Absolutely in Britain as well, Britain you have Qatar, but, Afghanistan, lots but, of issues. But the issue is that if when you are darling of the West, because you are a huge consumer market and you have millions of non-resident Indians who are now part of the Capitol Hill, they are dictating. You know, you have a Indian uh, background citizen. Um, of uh, UK Prime Minister of UK, uh, who, who the second day Dr. of your point, your point well taken. Uh, um, coming to you, uh, Brigadier Sir, uh, uh, we what when uh, when we are talking about particularly the uh, Kashmir issue and uh, a Indian enhancement in its uh, uh, defence arsenal, particularly with the help of uh, uh, Israel and uh, lots of surveillance uh, equipments and all that, and they are stationed within. Uh, illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, uh, they are uh, having the mining contracts to the Israeli companies right at the line of control. So how do you see strategically, defense-wise, how uh, it's going to be a threat for Pakistan, particularly for the uh, innocent Kashmiris within Kashmir? We have to see in a broader picture now that uh, it is not only the surveillance equipment and as well as the other arsenals being given to India. It is the training being imparted to India also, not for the military, but also for the strategic gains. But, and uh, somehow the very false impression of the Europe and America 
to use India as a leverage for containment of China is being exploited by India. And on the other hand, what we see that being the champion of human rights, the US and Europe, they are keeping mum for against the uh, Indian atrocities for Kashmiri people. And as we see that now India getting all the armaments, the technology for uh, spying also, India is trying that they should also follow the footprints of the Israelis as they are now getting land being captured from the Palestinians. India is also changing the demography of the Kashmir. The uh, complete rules for the uh, what we see Kashmir electoral areas has been changed, which are going to basically have a very disadvantage effect on the Kashmiris. Their majority is being now converted into minority. Agrees uh, to the plebiscite. I think so. Uh, I think so. There are some uh, technical issues, so uh, we will be in touch with Brigadier Sahib as well. Uh, uh, coming to you, uh, Navid Sahib, uh, when we are talking about uh, this particular issue, because now this is exploit, uh, exploited uh, strategically as well, and uh, uh, there is a containment uh, of China policy of the West, along with that, uh, uh, India is a part of that whole gambit. Uh, Israel uh, and India has an access, and uh, jointly they are doing a lot of, lot of things. Do you think that they have converted this uh, um, Kashmir issue into uh, their own favor uh, to have uh, an area which is very much secure to look into the region and uh, to gain their objectives internationally? Oh, definitely. Uh, according to the Western and the American design, Kashmir serves uh, the purpose of the American and uh, Western uh, interests in the region. Through uh, India? Um, through India, yes, definitely, because uh, India is having control and uh, occupation on uh, that part of Kashmir. And uh, if the American and the Western interests are served against uh, uh, China in uh, 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 based on Kashmir, uh, it, it will help them a lot. Uh, but definitely it will be a, a, a point which can create a big problem for the entire region if it happens. So, uh, as far as uh, the Kashmir is concerned, uh, if we go to uh, Middle East, uh, Palestine and that Gaza, that, that is a place where now West Britain and Israel, they want to create that buffer zone and uh, that piece of land uh, for the same purpose, to control Middle East. Uh, in the Middle Eastern countries, uh, Qatar is there, Bahrain, UAE, Kuwait, uh, and uh, even Oman is there. So, uh, uh, when we are talking about the Syria, Syria issue, so, uh, uh, Dr. Shamsi, uh, uh, Pakistan and India both are the nuclear powers, uh, and uh, uh, this uh, pivotal issue of Kashmir is actually the nuclear flashpoint right now. So, uh, where the uh, human rights champions and the dem democracy champions are when uh, uh, the Kashmir question comes? No. Kashmir does not uh, bother them at all. The plight of people of Kashmir does not bother them at all. Their championship of democracy, liberty, freedom, human rights, common good is only for themselves. Means they are making mimicry of Absolutely. that. Absolutely. They, they are just not concerned. Just look at the audacity of the Americans that they are vetoing the UNSC resolutions uh, for the ceasefire. Have you ever heard that a resolution to stop war against the unarmed and non-combatant civilians being vetoed by the sole superpower of the world? And rather they are fueling it the is, fire. It Definitely. is unheard Definitely. of. It is unheard of. But this is what is happening right under our nose only because the Ummah is not united. This whereas is, this is a huge issue. This yeah. is a huge issue. Whereas right? the entire uh, Western world is viewers, united. Uh, uh, viewers, we have uh, Mr. Altaf Wani. He is the senior leader of uh, All Parties Hurriyat Conference. Most welcome to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Altaf Wani, sir, uh, today uh, on both sides of the line of control across the world, Pakistanis, Kashmiris are observing the Black Day, and uh, uh, Pakistanis are always. Uh, 
uh, very vocal on uh, particularly on this issue but how do you see the recent and current circumstances of the illegally occupied jammu and kashmir when india is uh, all out uh, uh, doing everything whatever they want and there is no accountability by the international community uh, thank you uh, for having me actually there was never an accountability of the indians what they are doing there that's why the indian government became so arrogant uh, over the last 76 years they have Uh, brutally massacred the people of Kashmir. They have conducted uh, massacres in Kashmir. They uh, have violated each and every right of Kashmiris. And in current circumstances, when we see around the globe, when we look around the globe, we could see that they oppress people everywhere. They don't. They are not listened. It is only the oppressor who is being listened, who is being consoled if she or he has any kind of. loss it is only the oppressor which is being heard not the oppressed that is what uh, has led the indian government to do all this but having said that you know the people of kashmir for last 76 years have fought against india against indian oppression against the indian tyranny uh, so uh, their sheer uh, um, Uh, the support they got from the people of Pakistan and the valor they have in them that they want to defeat the nefarious designers of the Indian state. They uh, they must think that we have humiliated uh, the people of Kashmir. We have harassed them. We have intimidated them. We have vilified them. But they have not defeated us. The, the people of Kashmir are not defeated. They are very much there. They know the designs of the, their enemy, and they know how to live under these current circumstances, how to rise again against it. So that is why, uh, in, under, under current circumstances, when India says to the international community everywhere that Kashmir is normal, there is normalcy, but they don't allow anybody to come there. They have uh, closed the Jamia Mosque. For again, uh, when the uh, first release has been wise, now for last um, third Friday, the Jamia Mosque is closed. People are not allowed to pray over there. So this is the situation. If they cannot allow the people of Kashmir to offer Friday prayers in Srinagar, what is the normalcy? Why is normalcy? So Indians know that uh, they will have to pay the price of it, and people of Kashmir are determined. to respond to the indian tyranny that that time has to, uh, will come inshallah and we will respond to them so do you think that uh, a world community is doing enough for kashmiris and they are recognizing what is uh, actually happening and uh, uh, they are ready to uh, uh, take uh, some sort of stern action against the terrorism and whatever hostilities and human rights violations are going on within kashmir by the indian troops You know that there are two types of world community. I've been always telling one is the human rights fraternity around the globe, the civil society around the globe, and you can see the civil society around the globe is very much concerned about the Kashmir. But when you come to the uh, the international government, uh, unfortunately, they they have the double standards. They they look after their economic, their political, and their uh, strategic. Uh, uh, welfare. Oh, so they are looking towards the Indian big economy. They get the Indian Indians on them. So that is why India, I told you, like uh, the other powers, the big powers, has become arrogant in its policies towards Kashmir. So international community has failed the people of Kashmir. Indian international community has not implemented those resolutions which she had accepted on it. That's why the double standards of international community. We see lots of conflicts. around the globe so uh, uh, dr shamsi sir uh, coming to you that as uh, wani sahab has rightly said that uh, uh, there should be uh, some sort of uh, ethics uh, with the international community and there is one of the uh, segment who supports uh, this issue and particularly they are always vocal upon the uh, human rights and whatever is happening but uh, uh, do you think there is a ro- there is any room uh, within the international relations or uh, Uh, regarding ethics and human rights and democracy and all that these are the beautiful words but uh, do you think that they are always calling that uh, uh, peace is a luxury uh, basically if the powerful wants it uh, then there would be a peace if they don't there would be a war no actually there are uh, these jargons uh, they they carry no weight in uh, international relations um, they are only good for conferences press conferences symposiums and workshops and the literature 
means it's just to show off. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. They just don't care. They they are uh, they think that they are very powerful, and they can do anything they want. But I really appreciate to what one is upset that Kashmiris are not defeated, Palestinians are not defeated. Likewise, let me add another community: the Sikhs are not defeated. The Khalistan movement in India thought is over. It is not over. The Kashmir movement is not over. It may take another 50 years, but the people will not be defeated. The Palestinian people will not be defeated. Yes, international community may not be paying enough heed at this time, but the time will come. Why? Because they are fighting for the right of self-determination, which is their divine right. So, if they are not giving up, the why should the other communities give up? We just need to support them. And that was the right which was given by United Nations. Absolutely. When India plead for that. Absolutely, sir. So, That's what uh, uh, that, Kashmiris that, or the Pakistanis never ever gone there to have that right available because that was the territory belongs to Pakistan. That's what I'm saying. As per the partition plan, this was supposed to be Pakistan because of the Muslim population, geographical contiguity and what three conditions it was supposed to be Pakistan. But let's say it is not. Let it be Kashmir. Let the people of Kashmir decide. This is what UN says. And they are not granted this right. Primarily because the British dishonestly sowed the seeds of discontent purposefully as they did in Palestine. Definitely. Uh, Dr. Shamsi Sahib, uh, we have uh, uh, Brigadier uh, uh, Hamid Rashid uh, with us. Uh, Brigadier Sahib, uh, uh, another very important question uh, regarding Kashmir and that is about the leaders of uh, all parties, Hurriyat Conference, Hurriyat leaders overall, because they are incarcerated and they were tortured, they were uh, 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 sentenced to death in frivolous cases, unfortunately. and. Uh, at the same pattern India is going on, uh, what they have uh, done with the leaders of Khalistan. So, uh, uh, th now the first year leaders are uh, behind the bars and they are facing the uh, fake cases. Uh, along with that, uh, uh, there are uh, uh, other dynamics of the human rights activists, journalists and all others. Internet was uh, uh, stuck from the last many years. So, uh, how do you see that uh, the plight of the Kashmiri leadership and India wants them to remove or to uh, just uh, uh, get them away, unfortunately, so, uh, so that uh, that movement comes to halt or weakened? We must salute Ali Galani Sahab and Burhan Wani and also the Yasin Malik, the Kashmiri leaders, they have been a pride for the Kashmiris. They have sacrifice their lives, they have sacrificed their future, their youth, but they stood to the cause. They also made world realize that their struggle for freedom is bona fide, justified, and it is based on the aspirations of the people of Kashmir. They have withstood all the tests of brutality. They have also given a hope to the world that if they are killed, martyred or they are victimized, but they will always speak for the liberation of the Kashmir people from the clutches of the Indians. And as far as what we see, it gives motivation to the, all the human rights activities world over that tyranny and terror is not going to prevail, but the truth and the freedom and the will of the people to fight against terror and brutality will prevail. And I am hopeful that in times to come, this leadership has not only inspired the Kashmiris, they will also inspire all the freedom fighters and all the peoples who believe in just world and a fair system of fair play will be also inspired from their sacrifices. And Pakistan has all been be on the forefront to not only diplomatically support, but morally and also with uh, whatever is possible for the support of Kashmiris, we have rendered that. The caretaker prime minister addressed in the United Nations General Assembly. And also I would like to highlight that the chief of army staff, when he took over, he has a number of times reiterated that the uh, self-determination right of Kashmiris is a bona fide right 
which should be given to them so that they decide about their future, whether they want to be part of Pakistan or India, or they want to be free state also. And as the human rights activists world over, we must acknowledge Kashmiris this right for the self-determination. Fair enough. And, uh, do you not think, uh, Brigadier Sir, that uh, uh, some of the OIC member states and even uh, United Nations members are uh, uh, very much uh, interested in having uh, some sort of uh, investments, uh, uh, having commercial flights from uh, a disputed territory. They know that this is the disputed territory. Do, do you not think that uh, they are uh, uh, going to have injustice with uh, such an issue, which is the grave humanitarian issue? Certainly. But on the other hand, what we see that it is all the political gimmick by the Indians. What they want to prove to the world that the peace prevails in Kashmir, but then there will be intimate interaction between the Kashmiri people and with the world. And also for the Gulf state, they also know that the Indian atrocities will be uh, observed by them. And what we see that OIC a number of times has asked about uh, the Kashmiris to be given their right for self-determination. But I think the diplomatic efforts, if they get momentum, and now we see that the world has brought Raza in focus, and I think uh, with Kashmir also projected and diplomatically pursued, it will also have an effect on the global community that along with the Gaza, Kashmir also need a lasting peace in the region. Definitely, and uh, uh, Dr. Shamsi sir, when it is, uh, although it is very important to have uh, this issue must have to be resolved as soon as possible, uh, but uh, uh, there is a very important, uh, uh, whatever you call it, the important point that uh, India is now after the identity of the Kashmiris. Identity is something that uh, everyone keeps it uh, uh, with their heart. So, uh, when that is going to be questioned within the disputed territory, how you take it vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis resolution of the Kashmir issue? Yeah, uh, very rightly pointed out. Actually, it is a state terrorism against the demography, against the economy, against the population, because the youth of Kashmir is denied the basic rights. They are not getting the equal opportunities. And I also want to point out uh, the hypocrisy of the West. Just look at it. One rocket by Hamas fells in Israeli territory and it hits the headlines of entire media world and immediately the entire western world starts to condemn Hamas and declares them as terrorists and Israeli air force gets a license to pound the poor innocent non-combatant unarmed families children, women, and old. Isn't so, it? Uh, 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 Naveed sir, when we are talking about uh, uh, the humanitarian question, that is very important regarding Kashmir, whether it's Palestine, but uh, primarily when uh, we are observing today the Black Day. So, uh, Kashmir uh, wants its resolution at its earliest. People are suffering. It is, the, it is not only the question of uh, the territory. It is the question of those humans who are living over there. And Kashmiris doesn't mean only the Muslims. But other uh, castes yeah, also and Kashmiris. other religions are also uh, living there. So uh, why uh, uh, there is uh, not much hue and cry? Because when it quest uh, question comes of East Timor, when it comes to divide Sudan, when it comes to the question of other territories where Muslim countries are might be the oppressors, uh, that comes earlier. But when it comes to the uh, uh, territories who are uh, not that uh, issues no, not resolved from the last many years, uh, international community keeps on mum. Um, uh, I will take uh, uh, your. Uh, I will take liberty uh, to answer. You have all the liberty. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, to answer of on one part of uh, this, the, the question is the, uh, number one. And the young generation of Kashmir is uh, getting inspiration from Burhan Wani, uh, Afzal Guru, uh, Makbul Bhatt, and all the militant uh, 
or all the leaders of the Kashmiri uh, uh, Kashmiris. Uh, and when I find a stone in the hand of a young boy of five years and a feeder in the other hand, uh, uh, that boy wants to throw that stone on the uh, Indian forces. Uh, the inspiration will continue uh, uh, till the time the Kashmiris, they find their uh, independence from India or from uh, uh, the occupation. And the right of self-determination. And, and the right of self-determination. One. one word, one word for uh, in brief uh, for the brave Kashmiris who are still uh, fighting for their right of self-determination and uh, b uh, uh, unfortunately empty-handedly. Salute. My hearts go out for them, for both Palestinians and Kashmiris. Hats right. off. Hats off. Hats off to them, and uh, with the heart and soul, all kind of help that we in our capacity as I state, or the people, we must go ahead and do it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Shamsi Saab, for being with us. Thank you very much, Naveed Saab. And we are also thankful for uh, Brigadier Hamid uh, Rashid uh, for being with us in program. So uh, we salute to our uh, Kashmiri uh, brothers and sisters for their struggle for the right of self-determination. But Kashmir is still a pending question before the international community. International community, including United Nations, uh, has to resolve this issue because Pakistan and India both are the nuclear powers. Kashmir is a nuclear flashpoint. It is going to be a huge disaster if this issue is not going to be resolved as soon as possible. This day actually uh, wants it that this issue must have to be resolved as earlier as possible. This is the today's foresight. Thank you very much for watching foresight. Uh, this is the time to sign off here. Allah Hafiz al-Nasir.